Hello, and to those of you joining for the first time, welcome to my ongoing quest to break the bonds of VR and bring Aspire 1 out into the real world. This is going to be the basics of how to make something in Tinkercad, so you can get ready for the first section of being ready to 3D print your own Aspire gadgets. So, for the repair tool, I started like by going into the game. We're starting with Mission 1-1 mm -hmm. here, and we're going to have a good look at the repair tool for reference. What you're going to want to do is be recording footage, whether it's via Oculus or your PC VR headset, so that when we get to the repair tool, we're going to have a good long look at it, and we're going to try and have a good look at it from every side and angle that we can. You don't have to hold on it too long, uh, but you're going to want to try and hold it at least a little bit steady. And we're going to take this footage and go back to the computer. Once we have some of the angles we want, we're going to pause the frame and you're going to hit the print screen button on your keyboard so that you can paste them here into paint. From here, you can use the select tool and crop down the image to just what you need. If things don't fit on screen nicely, you can always change the magnification of the frame in the bottom right. Once we feel like we've got a good number of screenshots of the various angles saved, we can next try and figure out our dimensions. The easiest way to do this is to have one of the back of the hand. Measure it by whatever means you deem necessary. This can be pixel measurements on the computer or simply holding a ruler up to your screen. We're going to take that and we're going to divide that by the width of our actual hand. And this is going to give us the size difference ratio between that particular picture and what's going to fit best for you in real life. After that, for the repair tool, I did some approximate measurements of the handle, the main body, and the prongs, and was able to use the ratio I got to do my own calculations for the overall length of the repair tool. The exact length of the repair tool isn't as important to understand as the proportion of its size each component makes up, as we'll be able to scale it up later. Of course, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, so for those of you who don't have access to a more sophisticated program, let me show you how to use Tinkercad. This is on a free account that I created at Tinkercad.com, and I'm just creating a new design here. You'll notice in the bottom right, we can fiddle around with our grid, change its scale, and whether it's in metric or imperial. Now, left click is going to be our selection tool and how we move things about. The right click allows us to rotate and turn our view area. The mouse wheel will let us zoom in and zoom out and holding shift and right click will allow us to drag our work area back and forth. Additionally, in the top left, we can click on different sections of this cube to automatically snap to specific angles and views. Now we're going to bring a simple shape into our work area, starting with the cube. And as you can see, this panel here on our right allows us to adjust things like the length, width, and height. You can use both the sliders or manually input numerical values to get the exact size that you need. In addition, the points on the object will allow us to do much the same thing. Grabbing a side and pulling it, or if you hold shift, scaling the whole object in proportion, as well as doing multiple sides when you grab a corner. Likewise, the point at the top of our object, we can grab and use to change the object's height. And this arrow here at the top, here, let me close this box on the side here. This arrow at the top will allow us to move our object up and down relative to our workspace. You can also use the small box that appears with any of these adjustments to manually enter the units that you wish to move or adjust an object as well. Now we also have the ability to rotate our object and you can use the radial grid to get it to snapped position or again use the box to make a specific degree adjustment. 
we also have two directions of rotation that we can use. Going back to our pane here, and this top slider for radius. You can see as I bring it up, it's cutting out an amount of our object a certain distance away from its center. For a cube, this has the effect of rounding it off to a sphere. The other slider we have here is steps. And as you can see, it'll tell Tinkercad how many squares that it can use to transition between points in a curvature, making an object indefinitely more complex, but smoother and rounder in the process. We can also use the pane to change the color of objects. This is a really handy way of staying organized when you have multiple objects in your work area that you're interacting with. Clicking and then holding shift will allow us to click a second object and select it as well. Or alternatively, what we can do is we can click and drag and any objects in the area are selected and move as one, regardless of the other objects available. Clicking an object with shift will only select that object in addition to the object selected and will not select any objects in between. Once you have multiple objects selected, they will all act as if you only have a single object selected. That means any adjustments to rotation, height, length, or width will happen to all objects simultaneously. However, this is not permanent, and if you go back to selecting a single object, you'll be able to adjust it independently of the others. To demonstrate the next tool, we've got a couple of different shapes here, just to make it easier to visualize and understand. In fact, I'm just going to stretch this triangle and turn it a little bit, just to make what's going to happen next a little bit more obvious. So the next tool is the alignment tool, which is in the top right corner of the screen or can be accessed by pressing the L button. This will allow you to pick a point and get all selected objects to align to that edge. So you can see when we click one of the buttons, it'll align the objects left, right and center. And it's going to base this off of whichever point of the object is furthest in that direction. So for the cube, it's picking a whole face, while the triangle happens to typically have a single point that it's aligning by. The alignment of the objects is not just on a 2D plane, but if you use the alignment tool, you can get their heights to align as well. Now we have our triangle going quite firmly through the center of our cube. If I click this button or hit the G key, it's going to group those two objects together. So now they're not just acting as a single object, but if we look inside, we can see they are a single object. You can undo that by hitting the ungroup button, which is Control Shift G. If we're trying to 3D print these objects at any point in time, it's going to be important to remember to group them together so that we're not confusing a 3D printer by telling it that there are objects within objects. You can group a great variety of shapes and objects together to make different shapes and objects. In addition, not all intersecting objects need to be grouped. You can select a couple of objects and group them if you still need to make some adjustments and then take a grouped object and group it with other objects still. So we can see the triangle is not part of our grouped object, but if we're happy with the orientation of our triangle now and we want to make this one complete object, we can do that here. Now if we go to ungroup this object, these are going to ungroup in the order that they were grouped. So hitting ungroup is going to separate the triangle from the grouped sphere and cube, and then hitting ungroup again will ungroup the sphere and cube. This is great for working on smaller components of a larger object. As the more intricate something gets, the easier it is for you to be able to break it down into component pieces. In the top right, we also have the mirror tool, which allows us to flip our object a various number of ways. 
And then in the top left, we have the duplicate tool, also done with Control D for whenever we need to make another copy of whatever we already have selected. This means that if you need two wonderful opposites to something, you don't need to make the same object twice. You can simply duplicate and then mirror it. Taking our two existing shapes, I've mirrored one and we're going to try and align them together. You'll notice because of their mirror geometry, they don't actually line up perfectly when I use the alignment tool. So what we can do is we can go into the movement box when we try and move it and instead of trying to move in whole units we can start moving in decimal portions of a unit until our objects line up. Now that we're lined up we can make one interesting and more complex shape. The next the next ability we're going to address is the ability to use create and join holes to your object. We're going to grab this cube and as you can see it's shaded indifferently as it is a hole or negative object if you prefer. And so what happens when we overlay this with our shape and decide to group the hole together with our shape is that it cuts its area out of our existing object. So just like other objects we can group and ungroup these, and we can take an object that's a whole or a negative object and turn and rotate it to cut areas out of any existing objects we have. This is another way that we can create more complex shapes. Now the objects in our basic shape panel aren't the only negative objects or whole shapes that are available to us. We can actually turn both simple objects and complex objects into holes. As an example, we're going to stretch out another cube and we are going to take our complex shape and turn the entire thing into a hole by selecting it, finding the orientation we're going to want it in, and then turning it into a hole by selecting this button in the panel or pressing H on our keyboard. This will turn our complex shape into a hole and allow us to cut it out of other shapes. So now you can see our strange and complex shape has been cut out as an indentation of the blue rectangular prism we had created. We can create some really interesting and complex designs by a combination of adding shapes to objects and grouping them together and converting shapes and objects to holes and grouping them together. This will allow us to build and sculpt the sort of objects that we are trying to create. Remember that there's not necessarily a set specific way to create anything that you're picturing. As an example, I'm going to make a set of stairs by taking some cubes and stretching them out and adding them all together, or make a set of stairs by taking one big cube and using holes to carve it out of a block. Part of the puzzle of playing in Tinkercad is taking a complex shape and breaking it down into a bunch of simple shapes and figuring out how that works best with your mind. When you're done tinkering with your creation, you can come up to the top left clicking on the auto-generated name to rename it as you see fit, and then make sure your intersecting objects are all grouped together. And then once you're happy with things, click on the Tinkercad logo in the top left to get back to the main page. From here, you can click on your creation, click the download button, and it'll be able to generate an STL file for you to use in whatever slicing program you use with your 3D printer. Slicing for 3D printing is not a topic we'll be covering in this particular video. Now to actually have a look at the repair tool model that I've put together here, we're going to take this and we're going to break this down a little bit. As you probably saw, when the file loaded up, it's simply made of a few other less complex shapes. Here, let's get some color going on so you can understand the components as I ungroup them. You can see some very basic hexagons that I've kind of flattened out and attached triangles to for the prongs, as well as major parts of the main body. There's a half circle here for the hilt, and as we pull the hexagons away, 
you'll see that the core of the main body is simply a triangle with a couple of smaller triangles on the side. The details underneath the portions that support the prongs are just a rectangle with some triangles attached. The pommel of the repair tool got rounded out simply because I cut a donut around the existing shape to round off its corners. Now let's get rid of all this excess stuff and we're going to look at the most intricate piece of the whole design and that would be the hand grip. We're going to take this and we're going to break it apart into its various components. So as I select it and hit on group here, we're going to notice immediately the first thing we see is a couple of half circles that were just really stretched out to ease out the sharp point on the divots to the grip. Ungrouping again, and we'll see yet another half circle and a half circle again, also used just to round out the jagged points on the bottom. Ungrouping once more, and you'll see a pair of rectangles rounding out the points that were on the top. There's another half circle underneath here that was creating the curvature of the finger contour to the handle. Then the divots themselves were revealed as I ungroup and you see a couple of strange shapes cutting their way into the sides of the handle. We'll actually take this and ungroup it further, reverting it also to a solid as we do so, and you'll see it's a little bit more complex than one of the basic shapes. Ungrouping further, you can actually see it's a fusion of two flattened cones and two flattened cylinders that were all grouped together to make the right shape to cut the gentle divots into the handle. One last ungroup reveals the only remaining component here, a rectangle used to flatten out the top line. Other than that, this was of course just a normal cylinder, and if we just control Z our way through all of the components, you can see a little bit of how this file came together with just the components that were available in basic shapes. Coming in to have a closer look at the main body, you can see some of the texture that these combinations of shapes have created and some of the features and details. There are some super fine details that are missing on the repair tool as I thought they'd be too intricate for my locally available 3D printer. You can also see that I've actually separated out the file a couple of times for ease of printing. So if we go in and tinker the main body of the repair tool, you can see that I've removed the prongs here and there are actually divots cut into it so that when the prongs are printed separately, they'll be able to sit nicely into the main body to make attaching them with adhesive simpler. If I hit ungroup, you'll actually see the original prongs of the design still there being used as holes to cut the perfect shape into the main body. The prongs were removed to try and reduce the amount of stress and supports that would have to be built to create this shape in a 3D printer. Just like duplicating simple shapes, you can duplicate whole files by clicking the cog icon in the top right of the image and hitting duplicate. It will then take you directly into a file just in case you want to make any alterations or work with it from there. This should equip you with all of the basic tools you need to be able to go to tinkercad.com and, and get ready to 3D print by tinkering like an Aspire agent. There is certainly more sophisticated software available for this kind of function. However, Tinkercad.com is free to use and readily available.